why? I could be moved to tears to think of my special daughter's life. What it would have been like had she not come through or been taken or been forced into autism, developmental disability, now cerebral ataxia. Would she have kids by herself? Herself now? Would she come by to see me, ask me what I need, instead of my fighting to take her out in her walker? Only thing is, she does all these things, at least nurtures me too. As we walk unsteadily along, asks me over and over, what about my birthday, my birthday, my birthday? What day, what day, what day? Until I too laugh a little and dream of cake. <laughs> Why does my other brilliant, absent daughter stay away for years, keep her take on books, movies, color, cats, to herself when I could enjoy them so? Oh yes, I know she thinks I gave all the attention to her special needs sister, but not because I wanted to, but just because it was just one struggle after another, and all the while, I lost the chance to have some fun. <laughs> he looks like me. Maybe because I'm hungry to find a cousin. I see my Czech cousin. He's magnificent with wide-spaced, heavy-lidded Eastern European blue eyes and thick hands from work and falling from trees as a kid onto untamed horses, riding when they might throw him onto his dad's Nebraska pasture. Now he has legs that shuffle a bit and hinder the pace of Firefly Adonai genealogical research of his, showing if he would only look that his D-A-R, Mayflower, white surname ancestry on the other side is the same as mine. I'm a quarter Czech and a quarter Mayflower type. There were few people then. We could be related. More than once I tell him while his dear plain wife patiently listens but does not invite me back to the house. Maybe she is afraid that I dream of riding the mane of a rare blue-eyed Mongol steed to a passionate land of familial belonging. <laughs> This is a book I wrote a while ago about the homeless in San Jose. I just wanted to read a little bit about a woman struggling to find a home in a trailer. At half past seven, an abandoned trailer. At half past seven on Friday night, Darla Rose Levin made her way by means of her old janitor badge she never gave back to the generous nuclear front entrance on Monterey. Just inside, the last folks flowed out. The night guy had his cleaning cart to the first aisle past the door. Coming by him, Darla put her badge backwards so no one could see. She came into the emptying hall straight back. She pushed open the whooshing back building door and came across the open way where she glimpsed past the next building and fence where upright, obscured by trees, were the hint of ghost trailers, ready. From here, Darla saw that there was no way out there just yet. She couldn't scale barbed wire, the gate through. She didn't know how. But if this could ever be their home again, she had to prepare a way. She had to know. Around the quiet work cubicles aisles, she kept straight on her direction, even if there were no known way through. She had to feel how it lay out, day and night especially. See who came and went, in case she and Jeffrey must move sooner than she believed. In the distance was a door, beyond that, outside openings from the walkway to the warehouse. Beyond that, over barbed wire, the gate to love, to a trailer home. Thank you.